Well, thank you for being here this afternoon. The smart ones are in this room. So um, my name, uh, I work with Sloan Realty Vacations. I'm based in um, Ocean Isle Beach and Sunset Beach, North Carolina. And I'm actually have the privilege of, I guess, interviewing these ladies on your behalf and hopefully shedding some light on working with family. Um, I also work in a family business and third generation and my grandmother was one that got, uh, got an award today. So that was a very special moment. So as, as was Claire, so um, I thought we'd just start by having our panel introduce themselves. Um, tell us a little bit about how your family business got started and then um, kind of what generation's leading the business today. I think they might be on. Hello, okay. Um, my name is Teresa Woods and I have Visit Up North Vacation Rentals. It started out as Harris Properties, Inc. Well, probably just Harris Properties, the ink came later. Um, my dad actually started the business in the 70s. Um, his buddy bought a maintenance company, or wanted to start a maintenance company, that was at a resort called the Homestead. And the owners were all excited about this different opportunity for a maintenance company, but they were afraid that if they went with a different maintenance company, that the Homestead would drop their properties and they would have nobody to manage their properties. So my dad said, I already take care of a couple of places. We'll start a management company because he did real estate. I have my sister come from downstate. She's wanted to move up here and she can run it. Well, it started with, you know, just a couple properties, the big old flip charts. They'd call and say they wanted to come in and you'd exit out and, and so on and so forth. My dad really never worked in the business. My dad um, was, he probably always was a work on the business man because we all went to him because he was such a great businessman. Um, my sister and I then managed it for a while. Nicole went on to do some, and she's in the front row here. She went on to do some other stuff. <laughs> um, but she's also in property management and real estate. Um, and, and now it's just me. Then I did bring on my husband because I was sick of him being in the banking business. It was, and uh, it, was, it was sketchy at first to have my husband working in the business, um, especially since I owned the business. But um, we found a way to make it work. And um, there's some secrets to that, I think. And, um, and there's, there's where we are. Um, Great. Uh, Claire Reiswer, Galveston, Texas. We're on the Texas Gulf Coast. My mother, y'all saw it in the video, she started in, in 1974 um, in response to my stepfather who said people can't afford to build houses unless they can rent it. Like your father's company, it was all about paper calendars, moving among reservationists and taking reservations, move to software, et cetera, and the rest is history, right, with technology today. Um, I had a whole nother career in television production in Los Angeles, and when I, I did not know it, but my mother was planning and she was manipulating me. She was <laughs> manipulating that I was going to come back to Texas. On my own, I decided when I decided to move in the year 2000, back to Texas, I was actually gonna to move to Austin, but I was traveling first. I took a, a two years, I took three years off and traveled around the world for two years. And while I was traveling, I had bought one of those first little micro computers that they had. They were selling them in Hong Kong. They still weren't in the US, it was tiny. And so I could type, I could write my long emails, et cetera. That was in the time when there were internet cafes, when you were traveling and no smartphones. And I can remember sitting in Instagram Istanbul, across the street from a mosque and listening to the call to prayer and I'm typing out remember to let us know if you're coming to use your house because we don't want you to walk in on a guest she had me hammering out home or new newsletters and I found it very very easy because I had listened to them for so many years your kids will say the same thing mm -hmm. to you Whitney when they join the business so I ended up coming back I did some freelance work for the company she then called me in and said I'd like you to come here full time and when she told me she how much she was going to pay me I burst into <laughs> tears and I said that's not possible that's not feasible you know and she said well you've been living in Los Angeles it's not the same here so I turned her down the first time and this is one of the important things about the family business we have to step up for ourselves when we're in the, we're second generation 
And we have to stand up for ourselves and say what we need within that family business to make it work. I don't know if your husband had to do that. But so now my mother retired about six years ago. She's about to turn 86. And my sister and I are running it. She's all operations. And I'm all about admin, marketing, technology, and reservations. And, um, and one of the things that we've really, we have been so open with one another in that transition and it has helped a lot. It's all about money, it's all about succession planning, it's all about how it's set up and who gets what if, and we've done the scenarios, it's about if I die first, if my mother dies first, if Anne dies first, you know, and what we're going to do and how to handle it. So all of that's part of our, our makeup as we moved into the second generation. We don't have a third generation in place. Y'all are lucky. I got oh, one. you got one. Wow. Well, my situation is different because we, um, sorry, I'm Melanie with Oak Island Accommodations. I'm in North Carolina at the beach. And um, my family owned the company for 25 years, and they sold it three years ago. So we're in the year 29, and I'm still there. So it's not family owned any longer, but it's family owned run and operate it. So uh, going back to it, how it all started was my mom and dad found Oak Island on a whim and we were vacationing there a couple times a year and they said that was where they wanted to retire. So we were the vacationer type group that my mom and dad were like, we're, we're going to figure out a way to get there. And I guess I just coerced my grandmother in purchasing um, a real estate company. So it was sales and rentals at that time. It was a Cobalt Banker branch. And that was uh, 29 years ago. And uh, I was in high school. And so um, I've, this is all I've known all my life. I've done all, the, I mean, I went to college. I came right back. <laughs> Did they tell me I needed to be there in the business? No. But uh, my sister and I both worked there. And then as we each got married, we brought in our husbands. And some things have, have changed over the years. I've been divorced and my hus ex-husband's no longer there. But um, most it's it's now my brother-in-law and my cousin and myself and my brother-in-law who's almost 60 is getting ready to retire next month and so i'm beginning to move into his role so i will be the president at uh in march which is very humbling because although my family doesn't own the company anymore i still have to justify what i'm doing and, and where i'm going to go with the company and i still see it as what my family built and that's how i look at it from here that's fantastic. So a lot of depth there for sure to all of your companies. How about the structure? You kind of touched on it a little bit, but from a, from a family perspective, how, Claire, you mentioned this, but how are your duties um, divided? Um, yeah, Teresa, I mean, like how do you separate or do you all do everything and put it in a big pot and just all tackle it together? Or do you kind of separate your responsibilities? No, our, our responsibilities are absolutely separate. Um, that is one thing that I found both with working with my sister, uh, um, it's a little different than working with my husband. When my sister and I ran the company together, we did pretty much everything together. Um, we had an office together, we brainstormed things together, we were very much in the same mind meld and I don't know if, if that's, um, I mean, it was a blessing. It really was a blessing. It was very easy for us to work together that way. Um, with my husband, you know, he came into a business that was pretty much run by females in my office. And he came in, you know, from the suit world where you got a file and you put it down and you finish that file and then you put it away and then you get another file and then you do that. And when we started throwing 85 eggs at him, he's like, holy shit, what did I get myself into? <laughs> and I'm sorry to swear, but it is just a different animal from what a corporate type male is used to. And so it took some time, he did garbage pickup, he ran and plunged toilets, he, he learned all those little weird things that we all just do and don't think twice about it. But we did have to find a landing spot for him to call his own. And we found because of the fact that he was really good at, you know, he came from the bank world, what do you put him in? 
You put him in the dang finance department, right? He does all the accounting and he keeps us organized. And it's something we really needed because I was trying to do that too with the big picture stuff. And I'm not saying I was horrible at it, but it just is not my forte, you know? I'm do all the stuff, you know, like, and have 80 balls and, and I work well under pressure. You know, doing the Monday number crunching stuff is just like, eh. So I think finding the right place for people is very, very important. And you've got to look at the different personalities. Yeah. And as far as coming in, in the beginning, it's always scary when you bring a family member in. When I first came in, I had to make less than everybody that worked there, including the dumb little reservation person that should have never been working at our office, you know, because I needed to prove myself as a family member. That's something that people in, that aren't in the family don't have to do. You prove that you want to be there because you, you answered the ad, you went there, and you got the job. When you're a family member, they automatically think you're the little country club kid that came in and is going to get the silver spoon stuck in your mouth. And they don't realize that you've got to work harder than everybody. And if the family member that's coming in doesn't realize that they have to work harder than everybody else in that company to prove to the rest of them that they're, they're supposed to be there, then that's going to be a problem bringing in a family member. Yeah. So our structure is uh, we have about 20 full-time year-round employees, 160 vacation rentals, and about 10 home care houses, and we have 20 realtors. And so I manage the realtors and the real estate side of the business, as well as all the administrative, the legal, reservations, admin, and, and, and accounting, marketing, and technology. So everything. I have a lot. I have a lot. So everything. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 because I don't do Senior anything. I don't, I don't do um, a business development as Anne, you know, onboarding homeowners, bringing in homeowners, um, housekeeping, inspections, maintenance, all of that is on Anne's side, and the laundry is on Anne's side of the, the company. Um, but it's a lot of work. Um, I was thinking about something. I didn't come in and say, I I don't deserve what I deserve. I was a little more, but I had already had a whole nother career. I had been so gone bad. from Galveston for 35 years. And so I was coming back and I already had a background in technology and writing and all these other things I had done. So I knew my value to the company and thank goodness my mother did. So, so it's worked out really well. One of the things that we do do with my mother still, she comes in once a week and we have a very high level strategic meeting. We talk about money. We talk about finances. We talk about cash flow. We talk about legal issues. If we're making some changes like we are with our legal structure, we try to keep it to that and not about, you know, who's going to be out next month and, you know, lower level operational issues. We try to talk about the direction of the company. And then at the bottom of it, though, and this is the family owned business. Each one of the nieces and nephews are listed. We talk about each of the children, and it's at the bottom of our agenda. And every week we do that, and we catch up on what's going on with each of them because we're very close. Anne and I don't have kids, but we have these nieces and nephews who, who we're very close with. Well, um, over the time of my family owning the business, my mom was she was a secretary. My dad was a maintenance guy. <laughs> That's how it like started. And then, you know, when you have around 100 properties or less, or even up to 150 or so, you, you tend to have a smaller staff and you're doing kind of everything. So my dad and my mom, they were doing a lot of those things. And then things branched off and my mom began running the sales side of the business, real estate sales. And my dad was in charge of all the rentals and I was there with him on that side. My sister was also involved, and she's a whole nother. She and I are total opposites, so we kept her over on the sales side. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she knows who my sister is. So anyway, so, um, so over the years, our roles kind of were separated a little bit with that. And then as we grew, um, you know, my sister and I kind of came together, and we were property managers, which meant we were doing our onboarding. We were doing more of what we considered priority work for you know, where the money's going to come in, right? So you're, you're um, adding in the properties, the owner acquisition is what I'm trying to say. And, and of course, you know, you can butt heads with family members. So there was, there was times where people were just like, oh, they're arguing, better get out of here. But um, 
as we got larger, we realized we needed a general manager that was not a family member. So then what was happening is we had too many chiefs and everybody was telling everybody what to do when no one was really talking to one person. Uh, because at one point my father was so busy and so involved not just in the company but within the community, he ended up getting sick. Like he was mayor pro tem, he was doing all these things and it was like, okay, dad, we need to, we need to take a step back. You're doing too much. And so... I guess it all depends on how much, you know, how, how large your company is and where, you know, what's, what works best for you. Um, and then as we got even larger, we decided to, other than we, we hired a general manager and he helped quite a bit and we still have one today. Um, and then we also hired some of our, um, my mom and dad's kind of close friends that have outside corporate type um, backgrounds to be a, like on a board of directors. So we would have like an annual kind of retreat and just discuss a little bit of everything. And it helped us in a new direction, whether we wanted to um, go and do laundry, if we wanted to hot tub sales, when we talked a lot about what would happen if, unfortunately, if a hurricane came in and wiped you out, what are you going to do? You know, so we talked about whether we should be moving on to another direction in a different part of the state or somewhere else. So our roles changed a lot, but that structure is, there's not a board of directors any longer because my family sold out. So my mom and dad were able to fully retire. My sister, she basically retired. She runs a gift shop that we have. And like I said, my brother-in-law is, it's like we're all kind of phasing out. <laughs> but I do have children. I'm, I'm not necessarily saying that they need to get into the business, but if they wanted to, that's, that's something they can certainly do. I know we're just chit-chatting and we're talking too much, aren't we, Whitney? <laughs> no, you're good. Okay. You're good. Claire, um, I know you had an interesting kind of first career living mm -hmm. in L.A. and mm -hmm. doing what you did. So when you came into the family business, did you feel like, would you say, how do you feel like that transition was? Do you feel like it was easier <laughs> to work in the family business, more difficult to so take on that role and that I, responsibility? I had been a producer, and so I was in charge of things. And we'd start <laughs> with nothing, and we had to produce a television show that showed up at a certain time, certain date, certain length, et cetera. <laughs> and, um, and so when I got to San and I thought, wow, everything moves really slowly around here. I was sort of amazed at how it was like people were very casual about getting new initiatives completed. Um, the other thing was is I had to be really careful around my sister because I came in and I was sitting behind her at the time in this open area and I remember one day she got really furious and I said that's fine and I went and moved my desk back to the very back behind the sales agents right behind an exit door and I cloistered myself back there and worked from there and it was fine it was fine for what I was doing and we call it now staying in our own lanes you know because we have other ways to come together on strategy money budget all of that sort of thing but we call it staying in our our own lanes now. So um, I brought a lot of project management skills that worked really well in any business. You know, you can really walk in anywhere and, and work well because there's always initiatives and things you need to get done, whether it's deciding if you're going to put, I remember when we were going to put amenities into our house and I called either Carrie or, or Amy over at Tybee Island. I said, oh, I had heard y'all were doing it. So Carrie sent me this beautiful email with pictures. Here's how we set it up. Here's where we get it. How's your, here's how we think about it. Here's the pricing. This is what we did. And, and so, so I would pull together all that information for us to, to make those decisions because I was used to doing research. Um, Verma was another big part of my education. When I first came to Verma, um, we learned so much. And my mother's always given VRMA credit. We learned how to make money at Verma. You know, coming yeah. to sessions and listening to people, that's that's where we learned about it. So so it was it was not too hard. The family part was hard at the yeah. beginning, but we've made our peace. Yeah. And there's a lot of respect now for what we each bring to the let me just tell you one other thing. So a consultant came in to work with us and they said, You and Bert, my mother, and Anne, my sister, y'all are like a three legged stool. You function really well together, but here's the difference. And she took my mother out of it and she said and you're the kind of person, if there's a, Claire, if there's a fire, you're there and you're saying, okay, how much hose? Where is the, where is the, 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 the spigot? Where are we going to get the water from? How big is the fire? Anne's already putting the fire out. So I'm very analytical and I look for data and bring that to the table and Anne's just doing just it. Doing and it. I think that's it's the difference balance. between the things that I, that I do in the company and Anne with mm -hmm. operations. Yeah. Um. 
Melanie, what was it like when your parents decided to retire? Like, how was that transition for you? Was it overwhelming? Was well, it first of all, it wasn't something that my mom and dad actually had considered selling. Um, you know, there's always, you always have your ups and downs, and some days you're like, why are we in this business? <laughs> Yeah, you know, but um, someone had come into our office and wanted to see our business, and my dad was like, hmm. Yeah, and he, my father will be 79 next month. So, um, you know, they started to think about it. And so how did I feel about it? I was part of the process of interviewing. And, and um, so Town, Town Bank purchased us, if anyone knows who they are, but they're a bank out of Virginia, and they have an investment portfolio. Um, they, they do like to buy well-established <laughs> companies, so they're not coming in to, like, you know, like what you hear for what corporations do, where they come in, they just fire people and reorganize. None of that happened. Um, but <clears throat> the transition actually was rather easy. It's just unfortunate that that that, that very first year into uh, not owning the company any longer, we had um, uh, what was it? We had the uh, was it a shark attack. <laughs> yeah, the shark attack. And then we had, let's see, there was a hurricane, I think, and I was like, you know, things don't normally happen like that here. You know, so, and it just, it was uh, the election year too. So, you know, rentals and all that just wasn't like at the best. And so um, that that was kind of a, a challenging time to, because now that you are owned by a publicly traded company, they look at the bottom line, right? So they, they're looking for a, a number that you can try and reach. So if when we don't make those numbers, we got to figure out what else we can do. And so that following year, it was, okay, we need to redo some marketing, you know? So those have been a little bit of my challenges for the transition, but I actually, I really like the company that I work for. Um, I think we made a good decision there and my mom and dad were able to fully retire and they're happy and that's really all that meant, mattered to me. Yeah, that's great. So as far as, you know, technology is, you know, obviously a, a big part of all of our businesses today, but would you ever say that you, did you ever encounter a time when technology or innovation kind of became a, 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 a bone of contention, for lack of a better term, um, between you and your family, maybe um, from a generation to the next, not understanding the technology advancements or the innovation that you saw for the future? I mean, has that ever been a challenge for you or... No. 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 Yeah. Well, good. No, That's not good. for me. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't for us. We've been lucky. My mother's 86, smartphone, iPad. She doesn't even, she's not interested in her desktop anymore, but she's, she's um, technology literate, and uh, that helps a lot, and she's very forward-thinking. If anything, it was harder with my sister. When I first got there in 2003, she was barely writing emails. And we had to say, not acceptable, you know, 2003, you have to start doing this and in her department. But, um, but it's been, we, we, we are careful, though, with technology to make sure it's going to make our lives easier and work for our guest experience and homeowner experience, because otherwise it becomes really overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? My, fam my father was kind of the same way. It was, what are we going to put out new this year? And so he was always pushing us to do something new, whether, I mean, it didn't always have to be a new software. We had to go through that, <laughs> but he was never one to be against it. He might be one of the last to learn it, but you'd be surprised. I mean, I remember when the cell phones first came out and you still had the phone at your desk. He'd answer the phone, the other one's ringing, he had two of them on his ear. I'm like, Dad, how can you answer two at the same time? But that was, that was what he did. But that, that's yeah, so the opposite of what you would think that you would have some pushback. It's but no, part it wasn't. of the entrepreneurial spirit of our industry too. Yes. You know, right. so, Absolutely. yeah. Yeah, well, good. Um, so are any of you in a position where the next generation is kind of rising to the occasion to start working and taking over the business? I know, Claire, you said you don't have a, a third. Wowie. Um, Wowie. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Loaded question. <laughs> this goes back to that eat, pray, love lady. How much do you want to know? <laughs> Um, first of all, my boys, my actual boys, um, are too young. Um, I'm kind of hoping that they don't go into the business. And I know that may sound crazy, but um, I'd like them to find their own way first. I did find my own way first-ish. Um, I worked for another company that my parents were involved in. And when it broke up, they actually ended up owning the miniature golf course and game room that I ran. Um, but I had two owners that I worked for prior to that. Um, I was hell bent on not working for my family. 
I mean, I did not want to do it. Um, and when I did come back, <laughs> um, I didn't come back to work for my parents. I came back and I went into real estate and I was doing okay with real estate and, and doing some other things. Um, but I, I bumped into somebody who said, why don't you have a vacation rental company in Traverse City? You've got it out in Leelanau County. And that's what drew me in. I went and sat down with my dad. My sister, funny enough, was working moonlighting at a television company. <laughs> you know, I mean, like the parallels are just wow sometimes. Anyway, um, <clears throat> but I just think that um, my, my stepdaughter came into the business for a little bit. I fired her twice. Um, she came back a third time, and she did an excellent job. But then she fell in love, and she wanted weekends off, and she wanted to do the exact same job part-time for more money, and I said no. So she left. Now, um, she was really good, and I told her that. And so... Should she boomerang back someday when she is actually mature enough to make a decision? I might look at it. You know, I, I did fire her when she was very young and doing stupid stuff. But, you know, because it's not a country club. And I, I mean, it's not a country club. It's a job. Um, so I, we'll see with the boys. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I mean, my children are 16 and 11, so... Yeah. I think they need to go and find the world first to see if that's what they want to do. My sister, she um, she actually, when she graduated college, she didn't come right into the business. She was doing her own thing. She was working in D.C. Then she came into the business, and then she left and went to Florida, and she ended up selling uh, Property Plus software. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then she moved back into the business when I was having my my first child. And and so uh, she she came and went, but she found her way at some point. Yeah, I can remember when my um, my grandmother kind of passed the reins on to my mother, and that was, you know, I don't know, she was probably somewhere in her 40s, and um, my mother was, and I was just so in awe of just kind of that transition and my grandmother stepping back, and um, my family's kind of getting to that stage now within our business. I'm not quite there, but we're getting really close, so succession planning was one of the things I was going to ask you all about, without being too personal, but that, you know, if, you know, just planning for the future and, and, you know, as the families grow, dynamics change. You know, when my grandmother transitioned her business to my mother, um, there were just two children in the business. Now there are like 10 grandchildren, but only three of us work in the business. So, and um, so it's interesting. So as far as like succession planning, have y'all gotten to that stage of your businesses where you've you talked about it a little bit, Claire, about kind of putting some thought process yeah. into what happens if. Yeah. And, and the reason we got to that what happens if scenario is that we started talking about retirement. And I, want, I would say this is like 2006 and my mother was in her 70s. She didn't want to talk about it. So we reframed it with the help of a consultant who said, what if? Let's look at the what if. And let's look if. And it was not about the oldest person dying. It was about any one of us and what would us do what would we do and then we started working with a financial planner and a state planner and that's when we put in things like key man insurance and but just talking about it helped so much and putting it we really went around the table with each the financial planner and with the estate planner the what if with each of us dying first and what happens to the assets and um because we, because, and I don't mind saying this out loud, my mother separated what she did with Sand and Sea from what she's leaving her children because we knew that if she left it to five entities instead of two, there would be instant buy me out and it could take the whole company down. And so she separated her estate, made something for the other kids, and then, and then we called everybody together and everybody was told by her what she had done. That's key. And, huh? Huh? That's key. That's Communication. Key. It was key. And then we had to reiterate it over the years. We had to keep saying it so that there was not an expectation because it's only Ann and I. Ann's been there since 1983. I've only been there since 2003. But 
just being open about it was so, so important. And so we all very feel very secure in our places and our business. And when, so at first she, she gave us, um, I think it was 10% of the business each. And then it, we're now all equal owners with her as the voting, that has the voting rights. And so we all got a good laugh over yeah. that one. That's yeah, what she that's did. Good. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. No. I mean, you know, I mean, we did it when I went through it with my dad. And I, I, I managed the property like, or the, the company like it was mine. And I kept telling him, I don't know why I would have to be the owner. You know, like, it's fine the way it is. And he said, no, it changes everything. When you are the owner, it will change everything. And I'm here to tell you, <laughs> it changed everything everything and I don't know there is there is a difference when your name is on the loans when you are the one who has to do the payroll when you are and you don't have mommy and daddy to run to it is really different um, really different and so um, our company grew substantially when that happened um, and it is hard because I, I do have siblings. I do, you know, um, and things like that. We've also invested in some vacation rentals with part of our family and not the other part. Mm -hmm. And we did have to write it in that what if um, myself or my husband passed away first or my mom and dad or my sister and her husband, if in those vacation rentals, then they would go to who's ever left. They don't go to our kids at this point in the game. They don't go to anybody. It's like the last man standing has those vacation rentals. <laughs> However, that being said, my dad has passed away once my mom does, which is the natural progression that your parent dies first, but it doesn't always happen because our brother passed away. Um, then my sister and I have talked that then we would become true partners where it does then go to our children, you know, but it doesn't get messy in the rest of the family um, entity. Yeah. yeah, that's an interesting conversation for sure. It's all a mess. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to make sure you got it covered. That's right. That's right. I think that's key. So uh, kind of switching gears a little bit of talk about marketing and marketing your business. Do you feel that you've had an advantage to being a family owned business? And have you used that in your marketing? Yes, we have. And again, because we sold the business, we, we used to say family run and operated or own and operated, now we say family run and operated. So we still utilize that and we put all of our accolades, is what we like to say, of all the awards that we've won over the years to show the history and the, the family bond and that, that kind of thing. So yes, it's, it, it does help quite a bit. Um, even though we're, we're not hiding that we're owned by someone else, but we're family run and operated and we'll continue that as long as I'm still here. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, I got, I got my cousin, so we're still family at this point, but, um, yeah, so, but marketing has that, we certainly do that, and Kristen's here in the audience, I see you, but she knows what I'm talking about, because she does all the marketing for me, too. We do it also, and the other place that it really counts in our community is that I sit on a lot of boards and committees, and I sit with a lot of people who work for either attractions or hotels. They're not the owners. They're working for Wyndham, or they're working for Holiday Inn, or for Hilton, or for this big water park conglomerate, and I'm one of the few people there who are doing exactly what you were saying. I'm figuring out insurance. I'm, you know, the one who's doing payroll every two weeks. It's these guys are very, it's, it's a different existence, and when you own it, it's very different. So that, that, these people knowing that ours is truly family-owned and Ann and I are running it, you get a new level of respect. And I bet when Amy's out there, I'm pointing at Carrie because she, Carrie, her sister, does a lot of work in the community in Tybee Island, and it does command a different level of respect than those um, hoteliers working for national chains. I do and I don't. Um, I do keep the accolades of having the years and of, of experience. Um, I don't say family running. 
I, maybe I should. I should, maybe. Um, Are there other family-owned businesses in your market? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> one that used to manage ours. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it just, I don't know. I, I, it, I think it, the longevity is the thing that really I hammer home whenever I go to the township meetings, the county meetings, those kind of things, is the longevity that this has been going on, that it didn't just start with, you know, the last 10 years with Airbnb which everybody seems to think in those meetings, um, that we have been in the business since the 70s. You know, it's over 40 years that we have been learning and, and operating a professional business. And so I think for me, that's more important than the family owned and operated, but maybe I need to look at that. Yeah, I'm in a I'm in a market where there's five large companies and we're all family owned and operated. So, you know, yeah. we're all friends and friendly competitors at the same time. So, you know, we none of us have really that ad, ad, advantage. Our advantage is we've been there the longest on our island. So we do capitalize on, you know, our longevity and and um, roots in the community for sure. Um, kind of switching gears and talking about your employees. I know I've, you know, I've had to deal with this and struggle with this within my own organization. But um, talking about empower, how do you empower non-family members to find a career within your organization and excel? Does that happen? I know that can, you know sometimes is a challenge when really at the top it's you and your family, you know, ultimately. So. Um, I've had employees, I know from my experience, say, you know, I don't see, where's the top for me? The top is not the top. You know, I can only grow so far. So tell me about any experience any of you have with empowering non-family members within your organization. We've done it with a lot of help from a consultant. And a lot of it is, is helping people understand exactly their job description and what their decision-making power is and what their financial spending power is. And it's made a huge difference. I can't promise anybody they're ever gonna have my job. Anne can't do it for her either, though I hope to get to that point and we get like Michelle Aquavella and we've got a Heidi, you know, but that's <laughs> not happening right now. And so, um, but that's as good as we can get is being really clear about what, and, and we have three people in particular that we've really elevated and we've really put a lot of trust in, uh, in our small organization. And those were the tools we used. Yeah, I would ditto that. That was when we got to the point where too many chiefs and we needed, we need, and we needed to learn how to let go. Um, one thing that my, and I will credit my brother-in-law, he's not here, but I will credit him that I used to get really, I mean, work was, or the business is everything. You know, you're at home, you're still talking about it, you're still doing it. You know, we, we had to finally, we had to have a family rule that when you come home, we're not talking about work. Take, turn it off for a little while because it was consuming you. But as far as the decision making, yeah, we had to kind of learn how to let go. And my brother-in-law showed me that. He's like, you got tunnel vision. He's like, you got to let go and start looking at the big picture here, not just what you're doing because you need to let others handle those things. And I was like, what do you mean? No, well, they're not going to do it the way I want to do it. Well, train them that way. Train them. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, it's still hard. It's tough. It <laughs> it's is. hard. And being a female, I think we all probably have that instinct of, as we've probably heard a lot through this conference, is taking on more. Yeah, it's just easier to do it myself. I can't tell you how many times I've told my mom that. She's like, train somebody to do it. I'm like, I can, I can just do it in time that I've trained somebody. So, yeah, tell fine. Jody that. <laughs> I, I am the queen of delegation. Yeah. I good for you. Do <laughs> not. Um, the problem with my delegation is I delegated out all my fun stuff, and then I just was stuck with the crap. <laughs> and so I, you know, so I'm trying to do more things that bring me joy in my company, because when you start delegating all your stuff, you delegate your marketing. Well, why do you do that? Because that's fun, you know? But guess what? You got somebody who knows how to do marketing, so it takes something off your plate. Then you delegate the accounting because, you know, you've got somebody who can do that better. Okay, well, that was kind of the mindless thing that just got you to come on down for a little bit. So you're left with complaining owners and complaining guests joy. Um, I'm good at it. That's, you know, I'm, I'm really good at, um, 
uh, uh, talking with people and, and getting to the root of the issue and solving the problem and, and just banging it out. Um, but it does wear on you a little bit where you start, you know, the 10 people feel like they're a thousand people because mm -hmm. that's all you're doing. So I would say, you know, delegation, it, it's one thing to have a goal to become a really great delegator, but remember to keep some of the good tidbits for yourself. I work from home. <laughs> <laughs> Whitney's so, like, that's not fair. <laughs> um, I work from home uh, most of the time right now. However, there is a situation going on where I feel like I need to get back in. Um, and I'm doing a lot of mind melding, trying to figure out some good purpose and some joy in my life within my business as we speak. This conference has been amazing. I can't tell you how many times I've been in tears. I can't tell you how many things I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what I needed to hear. So I'm so excited to go back and do some things with my business that I think are fun. That's awesome. And so, you know. Yeah, good for you. I you know what you're this. excited about in your life right now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Well, we're about out of time. I had a lot of other questions, but um, does anybody have any questions before we wrap up? I appreciate everybody being here. Y'all are the cool people in here. Hi. Um, so I don't work with my family, um, but I work for a family. And I've worked for a family in the past. And the one I work for now is awesome. I'm not just saying that. It's, ex it's exceptional. There's something that I get out of watching them interact and um, how, I, you know, that I learned just as being a good person going forward. But do you guys, how do you navigate when you aren't, when you don't keep your cool, you know what I mean? Like when you're fighting with your brother or your, whoever you're working with. Um, and I know that part of that was you said staying in your lanes, but have you ever found people that might have quit because, oh yeah, you know what I mean? Because like there's problems at home and you bring it to work mm -hmm. and like you don't think you do, but like you're a lot shorter and you know, I, I'm not saying you personally are, but humans tend to do that, tend to, you know, reflect what's happening at home. Um, and if that person's there in the office with you, you can't just leave it at home. You know what I mean? Or you should be able to. But um, if you could speak at all on that, how you've navigated that, or how you, what you think that maybe maybe this is the question. What do you think I should I could do <laughs> when that happens? When like I can sense that when I'm like, man, I did the same thing last week and it was praised. This week, yeah, you know, why was everybody so upset? And then I figured it out, you know, oh because. You know, they probably got a fight to the owners. Is that yeah. the thing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Working for owners, the yeah. problem, the problems that employees might have yeah. working yeah. for yeah. owners. Yeah. I mean, honestly, we just stay in our lanes, and we have agreed. And I will, I'll be really honest. We weren't perfect. We worked through a lot of this with a consultant. And for a while, we, we're a low-key family. We do not yell and scream in our office. Nobody does. There is no drama around work. We think taking care of guests and homeowners is, and real estate clients is plenty hard enough. And so we set that expectation when we hire or bring in a realtor. And so we didn't have any of that. But when there was tension between Ann and I, we would take it off site. We would, because the last thing we wanted to do was make people uncomfortable. I think it's a little harder for Ann. She grew up in the business. I had already been out in the world working for different employers. And so, so she's always been in this bubble of protected by being protected by the business, but we just we take it off site. But now, because of our lanes and because of setting expectations of the information we drive up to one another through dashboards and metrics, it means that I'm getting what I need and she's getting what she needs from our different departments. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not always easy, but. I think at the end of the day, we all still love each other and, you know, sit beside yeah, each other at the Thanksgiving table, but, you know, it can get heated at times. I know my family, it's, if there's a deep conversation that's, you know, somebody's a little more passionate about, maybe a, maybe a passion project more so than maybe some of the other family members, we talk it out. You know, we all say our piece, and, but we do it behind closed doors. So, yeah. yeah. Don't involve our staff. I mean, I think that's, that's got to be awkward. No, I, 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 if it's ever happened. The, I, the yeah. thing is, is that I think that it's just a reflection of life. You know what I mean? I, I think that I, I've gotten way more from working for couples than I, I've learned so much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm just not, I'm not a couple type person, you know? Mm -hmm. So I've learned, I don't know. And learning to work with people's children if they bring it in on marketing and all that. It's, it's not easy working with family. It, it, yeah, it's there's, challenge, there's challenges. There's challenges. There's not challenges I feel like would be inaccurate. But if you're saying that there's not, then I get it. <laughs> yeah. There's, it, yeah. <laughs> 
there's always some form of disagreement, but I think it's just how they, you know, how somebody handles it. Like, you ever, have you ever had to reach out to your employees and say, like, how do you guys feel about this? Like, how do you feel? Do you feel like you're an extension of our family? Or how, you know, I'm, yeah, that our, was actually one of my questions. Yeah, our employees are not an extension of our family, and I don't expect to be one of theirs. Do we support them? Are we supportive? Do we provide the best environment we can? Absolutely. We're not drinking buddies. Do we celebrate if somebody's getting married? Yes, we had a big party for three marriages all in two months. But, but I don't pretend to be best friends with our employees, but respectful and we're there supportive, et cetera, but not best friends. So, yeah. All right, I think we're out of time. And yeah. I'm just going to say, with as being a couple, um, my husband and I keep it out of the office. We're not fighters as it is very much. I mean, there's sometimes that he, you know, frustrates me or whatever. But he's back in his office, and I'm in mine or at home, and it just is not a thing. And as far as a child coming in, I actually put one of my managers in charge of the kid. They don't report to me. They report to one of the people in the office. Mama maybe start at the bottom. Right. And like, but like when you fired your stepdaughter, that was like a smooth process because yeah. she was an employee. Right. I called her into my office and I said, you're done.